What is going on, everybody? It's Pelfrey. Thanks for uh, stopping by, following along on the Red Sea Reefer 250 journey. If you haven't uh, watched last Sunday's video, go ahead and watch it because it sparked quite, quite a bit of controversy. And uh, you know, opinions are uh, are fine. Everybody's got their own opinion, but uh, let's just move forward. Take a dive into this week's video. We're in uh, experimental mode now. So, give you a quick update on what I got. I got some Seachem floors for planted tanks. And I got some green leaf, potassium nitrate. I have pulled the reactor off of the tank. There's a cup full of pond matrix. The skimmer is not running on the tank. And my Algae Turf Scrubber screen has gone into overdrive. So to document this process, I'm going to scrape the screen clean, throw it back on the tank, and we're going to use this as the primary filtration. So I do have some pond matrix still in the tank. The skimmer is not on the tank. The reactor running the pond matrix is not on the tank. So let's, uh, let's run this and uh, document the process as we go. So first things first, well, you've seen me do this before. Simple, easy process, but my screen for my ATS has never looked like this. So it's a, it's a great harvest in my books. Dark and green. I am running the lights. Um, for about eight hours-ish. Of course, this thing gets constant flow. So, in my books, it's a very good harvest. Throw this clean screen back on the tank. Follow along as I experiment with the Red Sea Reefer. Sure, you've seen these before. Uh, these are Voss water bottles. Uh, this is going to be a dosing container. Uh, basically, this is an 800 milliliter glass bottle with a quarter inch bulkhead and then a fitting in here. Um, this is, like I said, 800 milliliters. This one is 375 milliliters. So you can see that there's a pretty good comparison here. So basically, all you need to do is drill a hole here in the center. This quarter inch bulkhead will slide in there once the hole's drilled, and then you'll screw on the bulkhead. And then what we have here is a piece of acrylic tube. So you'll measure it, then I will score it with a uh, razor blade, slide it into the container, and we're done. Uh, you, could, you can use um, Murloc line or Rody line. Uh, especially if you can get it straight. So, you know, my objective here is to get this close to the bottom. So it's a straight shot. There's no bends in it or anything like that. This is going to hold the ESV Bionic Alkalinity, Calcium, AP for Acro Power, not accounts payable. So this is gonna hold Acro Power. Currently dosing Acro Power in a 375 uh, milliliter Voss water bottle, but these are uh, very easy to um, remove the stickers. This is glass again, so what I do is I take a razor blade, go over to the sink, run some water on it, scrape it off. The nutrition facts scrape off. This is all glass, so it's very easy to scrape the um, uh, labels and everything off of it so that you can use it on your reef tank. Some folks have taken the tops and painted them, but I'm going to leave them as is for now. The important thing to keep in mind when uh, scoring this acrylic tubing is that uh, when you go to snap it, it needs to be a clean snap. Um, so basically with an acrylic rod, you take a razor blade as shown and you score the acrylic. You're not actually uh, you know, cutting it per se. And then once you get your score marks, you take the acrylic rod, put it on the edge of the counter and you know, one side is, is of the acrylic rod is stuck on the cabinet 
uh, or the countertop in the second half is hanging over the edge and you just push on the piece hanging over the edge and snap it off. I just ha happen to have an issue with not being able to score the acrylic rod so I went with the Murloc line. So it's just user preference, it's not a big deal. Um, quite honestly, dealing with the Murloc line is a lot easier to begin with. So it's easier to cut, easier to manipulate and everything. Um, <clears throat> going ahead and filling up the containers just because uh, I'm ready to get the, the bigger dosing container out of my cabinet. Uh, the bigger dosing container does obviously hold quite a bit of liquid but uh, I just want it out of the cabinet and I'm going to switch to the Voss water bottles to save some room and my next move is to figure out how I'm going to uh, mount my doser. I did get these Voss water bottles from walmart.com they come in a two pack the quarter inch bulkheads come from bulk reef supply you can find the bulkheads and uh, the fittings if you go to additives and accessories on the bulk reef supply website. I did transfer the ESV products into the BRS space saving jug just because I'm keeping them in the house and on a shelf so they work out good. Here's some pictures that I took with the iPhone 8 Plus. Really love this camera. Um, I'm amazed by the, the overall quality of the camera. The Nile skimmer cleaned up well. Had to take the caps off the dosing containers because the acrylic rod and as I said, I, meant, I swapped it out for the blue Murloc line, which I do like. In regards to the sump space and all of the real estate that I have now for various as what I would call activities, I went ahead and I ordered um, some substrate, some mud, some miracle stuff, um, something that I've wanted to try out for a little while now. I just have not had the real estate for it. So... Uh, picked it up off of uh, the Marine Depot website uh, just like everybody else you know spending 50 bucks for some mud seems uh, pretty expensive but you know you got to pay to play I suppose but anyway I've been wanting to try it out for a little while I know that uh, there's people that love it there's people that hate it it's just like anything else you either have a very strong opinion about it or you just simply don't like it at all I just want to find out what the hype is. Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? You know, follow along because I'm going to find out. And if you watch the Aquari, Aquari Clip um, gel filter video, you know that I'm pretty well not going to hold back. I'm going to give you my opinion on whether or not I like a product or I think that it's worth your time and or money. So, you know, being upfront and honest, I think is uh, very important. And that's just what we're going to do. Ecosystems Miracle Mud. So since I talked about the packaging in my previous video about the Aquari Clip, this is straightforward. It's a dry substrate. It comes in this container. This is a five pound uh, container. It comes in the left container, I should preface. Um, I bought it from Marine Depot. They packaged it well. I had no, no issues with it whatsoever. I actually put it inside of a critter cage. Um, so this is one of the cages that you can pick up at one of the pet stores. It's got a a vented hood that goes on top of it, which I'm not going to use, but I originally picked up this container to uh, introduce new fish into the tank, you know, drill some holes in it, use a magnet or whatever, but it's been sitting on a shelf. I ordered the mud. I don't have anything else to put the mud in, so I dumped five pounds in, and, you know, quite honestly, I could dump um, uh, ten, probably another five pounds, have ten pounds total, but we'll see if that gets that far. So all I did was dump the Miracle mud which is miracle sand into the container i took two cups of tank water and dumped it into the container and you can see how cloudy and uh, murky the water is my objective was to let it sit overnight and that's what i did so the next morning i didn't turn any pumps off i didn't turn anything off uh take the miracle mud and <laughs> as i'm dropping it into the water i'm second guessing myself saying maybe i should turn the flow off but at this point, I'm just a little too far ahead. I can't back down. So let's just drop it in a tank and, um, you know, see what happens. And I've watched a couple of videos on this, um, you know, Daily Reefing being one of them. He put it in his tank, and, of course, everything got cloudy. And I fully expected that to happen. I was uh, waiting for that to happen. And, of course, it happened. Of course, the, uh, the sump got cloudy, and, you know, 
there, there's really nothing you could do about this. Even uh, killing the flow in the sump, it would, I guess, minimize the, uh, the cloudiness into the display tank. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, this is a closed system. So what's in the sump gets pumped to the display. What's in the display falls into the sump. So there's no way around it. It's going to get cloudy. And again, I'm completely skeptical of this product. Um, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to leave it in the system and we'll, we'll see what happens. Mind you, I put this into my sump at uh, 730 in the morning, which my lights don't normally come on. So I turned the Kessels on just for the uh, demonstration to show you that the, the display did get cloudy. Um, I actually expected it to get a lot more cloudy than it did, but overall it wasn't that bad. Uh, you know, there's some polyp extension. Truth be told, the lights were off anyway, and that's typically when there is polyp extension on the majority of these corals. So, you know, I, I flip a coin, you know, that's all I'm going to say. I mean, I, I don't know if the, the Miracle Mud was uh, any result of that, but, you know, 20 minutes later, the uh, sump is cleared up and uh, off to work I went. Whenever I got home in the evening, display was uh, cleared up. So let's take a look at the Santa Monica Rain 2, which is my primary filtration. No skimmer, no carbon, no anything. Just the algae turf scrubber, and it is doing fantastic. If you remember from last week's video, I took the screen off of the scrubber, scraped it clean, and uh, we got great growth again on the uh, on the algae turf scrubber. So I did test nitrates midway through the week. They were zero. Phosphates were uh, about one and uh, alkalinity was 8.7 those are the three that i tested for but you can see here that i'm having some bleaching issues and it has been pretty pretty bad uh, i know i've talked about nitrate dosing in the past and that is probably the path that i'm going to take now i will say that i did get an order in from live aquaria and to uh, prevent those that tell me i need to quarantine fish and what i'm doing is completely wrong we're going to save that for another video but I will go ahead and say that picking fish is definitely not uh, something that I'm very good at. I like to go for something that's going to be beneficial, do some type of job, and have some good coloring. But anyway, the, uh, the soft corals, for the most part, have done well. A couple of the SPS have still done well, but, you know, it's just a, a kind of wait-and-see game at this point. So I have taken the green leaf KNO3. I've already mixed it with some roadie water. I have not dosed any yet. I'm just kind of waiting and seeing if I could do this naturally. But I have a feeling that I'm going to be dosing the nitrate sooner rather than later. Um, you know, I definitely don't want any of the corals to suffer anymore. Um, so it's it's something that I think that I'm going to have to do. And I really don't want to, but I don't really think that it's the absolute worst thing either. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and cut the video off here. I do appreciate you following along on this journey. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any thoughts, uh, suggestions, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram, Pelfrey's Reef. Go to the website, pelfrey.net. Check out the meme section. There's some new memes on there. I try to do those about once a week. And that's going to be it for this update, folks. 